Hello everyone. Today I am going to show you a presentation about client server binding in RPC. Before moving to work client server binding in RPC, first of all we should know about RPC that is remote procedure call. The remote procedure call is a protocol that one program can use to request a service from a program located in another computer on a network without having to understand the network's details. A procedure call is sometimes known as a function call or a subroutine call. A remote procedure call is an interprocess communication technique that is used for client server based applications. A remote procedure call uses client server model. It is necessary for a client to know the location of a server before a remote procedure call can take place between them. As a remote procedure call that is RPC uses client server model, the client server binding process is very important in RPC. Now what is client server binding? The process by which a client becomes associated with a server so that calls can take place is known as a client server binding. The client server binding process involves proper handling of several issues. How does a client specify a server to which it wants to get bound? How does the binding process locate the specified server? When it properly bind a client to a server? Is it possible for a client to change a binding during execution? Can a client be simultaneously bound to multiple servers that provide the same services? And these all several issues can be handled by the five processes which are involved in the client server binding and these five processes are server naming server locating binding time change bindings and multiple simultaneous binding the first process is server naming the specification by a client of a server with which it wants to communicate is a primarily naming issue and the server naming uses interface names. This interface name has a two parts, types and instance. A type part specifies the interface itself and it has a special field called as a version number field. This version number field distinguishes between old and new version of the interface itself. And the second part of the interface name is an instance. An instance specifies a server providing the service within that interface. For example, there may be an interface of a type file server and there may be several instances of servers providing file service. When client is not concerned with which particular server of an interface services it is requesting, it need not specify the instance part of the interface name. This is all about server naming. The next process is server locating. The interface name of a server is its unique identifier in server locating. Thus, when a client specifies the interface name of a server for making a remote procedure call, the server must be located before the client request message can be sent to the server. This is primarily a locating issue and any locating mechanism can be used for this purpose and hence the two common methods are proposed. These methods are broadcasting and binding agent. First is broadcasting. Client broadcast a request message to locate the desired server. The node on which desired server is located returns a response message. If the desired server is replicated on several nodes, then the first response is given to client node and rest are discarded. The broadcasting method is easy to implement and it is suitable for use of small networks. However, the method is expensive for large networks because of increase in message traffic due to the involvement of all the nodes in broadcast processing. Therefore, the second method which is based on the idea of using a name server is generally used for a network and this method is a binding agent method. 
बाइंडिंग एजेंट इज अ नेम सर्वर यूज टू बाइंड अ क्लाइंट टू द सर्वर बाय प्रोवाइडिंग द क्लाइंट इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ लोकेशन ऑफ डिझायर्ड सर्वर इट मेंटेन्स अ बाइंडिंग टेबल विच मॅप्स सर्वर इंटरफेस नेम टू इट्स लोकेशन ऑल सर्वर्स रेजिस्टर्स देमसेल्फ विथ द बाइंडिंग एजंट ॲज अ पार्ट ऑफ देअर इनिशियलायझेशन प्रोसेस टू रेजिस्टर विथ द बाइंडिंग एजंट अ सर्वर गिव्स द बाइंडर इट्स आयडेंटिफिकेशन इन्फॉर्मेशन अँड अ हँडल यूज टू लोकेट इट as shown in the given figure to locate a server a client contacts with the binding agent if the server is registered with the binding agent it returns the handle of the server to the client this process involves the binding agent means how the client can contact with the server process with the help of the binding agent in this process first the server register itself with the binding agent then the client request the binding agent for the server's location as soon as the binding agent finds the server's location then the binding agent returns the server location to the client and the client calls the server this is the process of binding agent in case of rpc here the handle is the system dependent and might be an ethernet address an ip address a process identifier containing a node number and a port number or something else here the handle is used to register a server with the binding agent a binding agent interface usually has a three primitives register b register and lookup register register is used by a server to register itself with binding agent d register is used by a server to de register itself from the binding agent lookup is used by a client to locate a server this is all about server locating and its two methods broadcasting and binding agent next process is binding time a client may be bound to a server at a compile time at a link time or at a call time binding at a compile time in this method the client and server modules are programmed as if they were intended to be linked together for example the server's network address can be compiled into client code by the programmer and then it can be found by looking up the server's name in file the method is extremely inflexible in the sense that if the server moves or the server is replicated or the interface changes all client programs using the server will have to be found and recompiled in the binding at a compile time the next is binding at a link time in this method a server process exports its service by registering itself with the binding agent as a part of its initialization process a client then makes an import request to binding agent for the service before making a call the binding agent binds the client and the server by returning to the client the server's handle due to the overhead involved in contacting the binding agent this method is suitable for those situations in which a client calls a several times once it is bound to it the next is binding at a call time in this method a client is bound to a server at the time when it calls the server for the first time during its execution a commonly used approach for binding at a call time is indirect call method as shown in the figure the indirect call method for binding at a call time is illustrated in this indirect call method there are several steps to be followed first the client process passes the server's interface name and the argument of rpc call to the binding agent the binding agent sends in rpc message to the server 
including in it the arguments received from the client the server then returns the result of request processing to the binding agent then this result is returns to the client by the binding agent along with the server's handle then lastly subsequent calls are directly from the client's process to the server process are connected so this is the process of binding at a call time using indirect method the next process is change binding the change binding process provides the flexibility the flexibility provided by a system to change bindings dynamically is very useful from reliability point of view the client or a server may wish to change binding at some instance of a time binding is a connection establishment between client and server the client or server of a connection may wish to change the binding at a some instance of a time due to some change in the system state for example a client willing to get a request service by any one of the multiple servers for the service may be programmed to change a binding to another server of the same type when a call to the already connected server fails similarly the server of binding may want to alter the binding and connect the client to another server in situations such as when the service needs to move to another node or a new version of the server is installed then the next is multiple simultaneous bindings a client can be bounded to multiple servers we have seen that in general a client is bound to a single server of the several servers of the same time however there may be situations when it is advantageous for a client to be bound simultaneously to all or multiple servers of the same type logically a binding of this sort gives rise to multicast communication because when a call is made all servers bound to the client for that service will receive and process the call for example when a client wishes to update multiple copies of a file at a file server that is replicated at a several nodes for this the client can be bound simultaneously to file servers of all those nodes where a replica of the file is located this is multiple simultaneous binding process so this is all about the client server binding process in rpc i hope it will be helpful for you